Bonjour, true footy babies. Como esta? Me chiamo Daniele. Oh, wait, that's Italian. I was going off with. I don't even know what I. Yeah. You started French, I believe. I went a bit of Italian and then Ni hao. Yes, we do have a global audience. Yes. That's actually not true. Actually, (laughs) we do have some viewers in Vietnam. Nice. Yeah, like a small contingent consistently in Vietnam. So I like it. Yeah, thanks, guys. Huh? Uh, True Footy Podcast 46. It is pre-JLT this yep. time. In fact, I had no idea. Is it JLT. still called JLT? It is not. It's called Marsh. Good point. Yeah. You'd think we'd know that doing a... They change it show. every bloody year, so who they cares? Do. Yeah, you can't really blame us too heavily. Just call it NAB forever, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, or Wizard, wizard. Cup. No, Wizard was the wizard best. Wizard Home Owners Cup. That was definitely the best, the Wizard. We'll yeah. stick with the Wizard. <laughs> Uh, football was better. Name it after Jeffrey Farmer, the preseason. It's uh, fair enough, I feel. True. Uh, <laughs> I actually had no idea the first game was tonight. I saw a meme about St. Kilda and Hawthorne playing tonight, and I was like, oh, the women's AFLW game's getting a lot of memes about it. And I was like, I just assumed it was a women's game, uh, women's game still. But yeah, no, it started tonight. I think it's because the Eagles start next week, so I, yeah. I hadn't prepared men- emo- emotionally for um, football. So yeah, that's um, a nice bonus. On my head space is definitely not football at the moment. I've just sort of... Had a bit of a jump into cold water for this podcast today oh, really? to sort of get back in the zone. You've been taking a bit of time off, yeah. I, uh, well, there hasn't been anything to engage with, really. I've just like I've been reading news and that sort of stuff, but like not really getting my head, yeah, frame I, yet. I've done a couple of video. Well, I've done a couple yeah. videos a week, maybe for the last month, to try and get it going. But the views are definitely down. So um, yeah, I think everyone's kind of the same as you. Yeah, I think hopefully it'll kick off kick off pretty soon. Um, but I haven't seen you since the last time I was here in this shirt, actually, in this hot room, because we have to turn it down for the, uh, turn the air con down for the audio, um, since we did the Adam Simpson documentary. And if you remember, that was when I said I'd come over and just record a 40-minute yeah. documentary. I tried to sit out here with you, but you had the air con off and you are recording. I was just sitting there going, bugger this, I'm sweating my ass off. For people who have watched that, it, you cannot see the immense emotional and mental struggle I'm going through while recording that I, I'm dripping with sweat because it got so hot in here but yeah what was yeah. it like 38 that day or something yeah. stupid like that smacking the heat wave yeah and it took like 3 hours to record that because if you think 40 minutes condensed down it was yeah. about 3 hours I was here and so. you do tend to talk a bit of shit so you got to sift through <laughs> that when you record what happens is when you get <laughs> tired and hot you start fucking up more yeah so I was definitely. making a lot more errors and it was just taking much longer so yeah it wasn't perfect but the documentary's gone pretty well I've got like five and a half thousand views so far so if you haven't seen it especially if you're an audio only listener to the True Footy Podcast uh, and if you're an Eagles fan I did an Adam Simpson documentary on the channel so go check that out because it took so so long Um, and it's just it's funny how YouTube works you can put I probably put like three weeks of work into that documentary and it's gotten way less views than some of my videos which yeah. My Eagles reacting to the new Eagles song, which took me like 20 minutes to smash out. Uh, that's got way more views. So. Well, to be fair, that song is pretty hilarious. Yeah, it was. It's a meme in itself, isn't it? <laughs> I was in raptures watching that whole fucking video. I was just <laughs> pissing myself laughing. Eh? I was just like, I was, well, at least I was you in raptures. Laugh. I, uh, yeah. I don't but know I, I, I was a bit triggered, though, I gotta say. Hmm? You can't even let Freo have the worst song. You had to fucking outclass us in everything. Fuck. I actually agree. I've always been a defender of the Eagles song, but not anymore. No, mm. that is. I wasn't case. a defender of either club song, but you've. I don't, ha- ours. I don't mind ours, but you've definitely made it undisputed that you guys have the shitter song now. So you couldn't even let us have that crown. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just we'll take everything down. away from us, you Eagles <laughs> bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Leaders in every as- aspect. Yeah. Um, yeah. And other exciting news for people who watch AFL uh, YouTube generally. Got Al, um, I was going to say Alistair Cookson. <laughs> um, young That'd be a good nickname for him yeah. if he was a Hawks fan. Yeah, and a coach. Uh, young King Cookson is going to be on the next True Footy podcast recruiting, recording next Tuesday over Skype. So, check it out. He's uh, kindly agreed yep. to come He's a good character. Show. Yeah, he's a good bloke. So. Bloody earth. Yeah. Uh, All-Star Game. The other thing I should announce is we were going to live stream this, but I've copped a late work shift. Ooh. Yeah. Controversial. I know. I've been trying to find a way around it, but I can't get out of it so maybe we'll do a JLT game or something yeah maybe we'll do that just to say JLT Derby or something is there one there usually is a JLT Derby I'm pretty sure yeah you might be right actually every year there usually is yeah okay but anyway Uh, but yeah All-Star Games announced as well yeah do you think what do you think of the teams oh they were pretty like expected to sent like a couple of names I was a little surprised like Jay Gresham and Lockie Weller they were a little on the surprise side but I guess you had to have someone from every club I didn't realise Lockie Weller made it I think I he, actually didn't realise. I believe he did. I didn't look too deep at the teams, to be honest. I'm pretty sure he made it. Yeah, right. Wow, that is interesting. Yeah, it was 27 actually. aside. He did, because yeah. I remember Ross Lyon talking about him. 
on the yeah. cause I watched that whole thing with Ross Lyon and Matthew Lloyd. Yeah, interesting. Did Wits get picked? He would be under allies as I well. I don't remember no, Wits. I don't, think, I don't think he did. Yeah, I, nah. I mean, you'd pick Wits before Willock, but yeah. Tim Kelly didn't get um, picked, yeah. but I guess it's just availability as well. Yeah. So. But that'll be exciting. It's more yeah. about just the obviously the money raised, but exactly. it'll, it'll still be exciting no matter what. That midfield. The midfield battle's going to be sick. So yeah. Five Crips and Yo all in the same midfield. This That's uh, a huge, physically huge midfield. Yeah, pretty physically dense for sure. Yeah, and the midfield too. A few thick boys. Yeah, that's it. Um, also, should just quickly, before we get into the crux of the podcast, which is a lot of uh, fan questions as well. I say fan. I hate using the word fan. <laughs> we don't have fans. We use the term dubiously. Subscribers. Yeah. Subscribers. Uh, we have a fantasy league. Link, or rather the invite code is in the description. Got over 100 people signed up already, which is sick. Shit. And uh, we've got a Super Coach League as well. And I'll, I'll leave the code for that in the description as well. So that's already established. Um, so go check that out. Busha, are you ready to start the podcast? <laughs> Let's do this. Cool. All right. So, fan, uh, not fans. I literally just did it again. Acquaintances. Discord users. Our friends of ours. Online acquaintances. Online acquaintances. Chums. Friends of the channel. Associates. Have sent in questions. <laughs> Uh, to help us get through the podcast, and uh, they've always done a great job. Always yep. good uh, stimulation. Wow, that's also not engaging meant. content for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, cool. So I'll just kick it off. Um, and Michael Stanton wants to know how much do we follow AFLW, which uh, is something I haven't uh, even mentioned I was on this say, podcast yet. I got to admit, I'm not too on top of it, but I did watch a good chunk of the Derby the other day, and it was yeah. a pretty good game to watch. Yes, that I enjoyed it. It must have been a cool atmosphere. I've spoken to people who yeah. went to the game because it was 35,000 people. Yeah, uh, yeah, that would have actually. Uh, it's one of those things where the game, it's way cooler than TV makes it look mm. in terms of the vibe. Yeah, yeah, and the historical significance. It's the first Derby in women's. Like West yeah. Australian football, that's that's true. That's huge. Yeah, it is. It is. Pity about the result. I loved the result myself. <laughs> it's nice to see you guys, the club, coming in bit after. Yeah, and that's true. Have to go through the growing pains like we did. I know we the, came in after you guys. I know the Eagles as a club were horrified that Fremantle won the bid to be the first um, Perth AFLW team. Yeah, I could see a lot of pissed off West Coast fans about that, to say the least. Yeah, yeah, but oh well, it's okay. You know, what it does kind of irk me though. What? The, pe- the people that still bring up AFLW as though it's a debate, uh-huh. like should or should it, uh, should it or should it not be a thing? Uh-huh. Like I think we're past that now. Can't we just accept? Uh-huh. Well, is it the fourth year now, right? Yeah. Like there's no moral uh-huh. element to uh-huh. this. Like some people, the only maybe thing is an issue is the rate of expansion, where the depth of talent in the league. Yeah. But other than that, like well, someone, someone, you got to start somewhere. A female asked me recently, and it was really uh-huh. interesting the, the phrase of the question. She said. Do you agree with women's football? And I just thought, wow, that's a really interesting uh, line of thinking. Was it I was like why would you argue against women playing football? <laughs> was it did Dunstall come out recently? One of my friends was telling me this. I don't know if it was recently or something he said ages ago, but like the women's bodies being able to hold up to that level of punishment argument. I mean, you can make an argument that people yeah. shouldn't do UFC. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. You shouldn't do anything that could hurt your body. Ultimately, yeah. it's each person's decision. To, exactly. Yeah. It's, a, it's a voluntary thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I guess I'm just kind of sick as well of people just bashing the, how the poor the level is. Like, it's basically yeah. like we've got 18 Gold Coasts in the, yeah. in the league because, like, they're all new. Yeah. Do you it, know what I mean? Yeah, it is a fair debate, but you've got to, like, realistically, you've got to start somewhere. Women's yeah. football was never really a thing, even, like, mm. rurally, like, just locally. It was never really a thing, with probably a couple of exceptions. Yeah. Until probably 2010. That's true. Yeah. I don't know too much about the history of women's football prior to AFLW, but even waffle women's I'd never really heard of until the 2010s. Yeah, that's true. Amateur women's I hadn't really heard of until like the 2010s decade. Mm. So you got to start somewhere. You got like the, especially because there hasn't been a group of juniors that have grown up from like Oz kick to 18s yeah. getting drafted yeah. that haven't had that opportunity that yeah. the established blokes draft system have had. So you got to at least give them that sort of time to sort of build up a talent pool. Women's cricket's pretty good. Yeah. Our, wi- yeah. our women are consistently the best in the world, I think. Yeah. But, right. I mean, the standard generally, yeah. like, it's quite it's quite good. And I don't think it was that, yeah. that way maybe 10 or 15 years ago. It's like, it's come on recently. Yeah. Particularly the way it's branded, and, or marketed, rather. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like the way they've branded the women's cricket. Like, they're not too abrasive with it, but they're, like, give you the access and... One thing does annoy it. me, and I know this might, might, I might sound like an asshole, but if you go into the Cricket Australia app, they yeah. just describe all like the feed of news and results 
is um, gender neutral. So you don't know just by looking yeah. at an article or a scoreline whether it's men or women's cricket. That that yeah. does annoy me because like the other day, and I admit I don't follow cricket that closely anymore. But when I uh, I went on there to check a score and it said something about like oh we just beat India and I was like what the hell we were playing India uh-huh. and then I, it took me like three clicks to realize it was well, two clicks to realize it was the women's game. Uh-huh. Yeah, that kind of that kind of annoys me. I feel like you yeah. should make it at least like yeah, that just makes it easier for everyone to know what they're trying to find. It's just, yeah. yeah, it's not sexist. It's just pure logistics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So to answer the question, to be honest, I don't follow AFLW, but my excuse is that um, this is the Eagles' first season, and I've watched one out of two games. Not a bad effort. Yeah, I got to admit, if I hear Freo made the finals and look pretty good, I'll probably yeah. get around the final series. I mean, it's probably your only chance you're going to see Fremantle in a grand final <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, for a while at least. I've just taken a piss. It's just a just a side swipe, uh, but yeah. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> true. Michael Stanton also wants to know which players are you excited about seeing in this Marsh series. Oh, that question was players. I had teams. Oh, because it said who are you excited? I sort of took who is like. Yeah, team. you're right. Well, go on. I, I had Carlton and Hawks, but I guess you could sort of say some players off them. Why? Mike Carlton and Hawks. I've, I do say this one every year, but I think it's like the year where you start to see all the pieces they put together, get a bit of cohesion, a bit of every, it start to click sort of thing. Some new recruits. Eddie yeah. Betts, Jack Martin was a player that I had down. Yeah. Just to see how he goes in a different sort of setup. Yeah, yeah definitely. Even the Hawks was the other one I had as another team that I'd be interested to watch, which you could link to players like Tom Mitchell, see how good he is going to be when he comes back. Even Warple, I'm probably interested to see if he can improve mm. some more going into his third year. Wingard, I think Wingard, Wingard yeah. didn't play a full season, did he? I can't remember now off the top of my head, but I, I think yeah. he missed games. It'd be interesting to see how they look like relatively fully healthy, like Jager yeah. back, like Patton, Frost. yeah, Patton, yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, we'll talk about Hawthorne. Patton's one. I'll probably inside uh, excited to say actually, yeah, but we, I think we mentioned him a bit later as well. We do. There's a question yeah. on Hawthorne. Yeah. There's a few, which is good. Um, any other teams or? Well, I had those two as my main sort of two. Like, there's the obvious ones like Freya. I'm obviously interested to see the contenders. Yeah, you like just want to see how sharp they look. Yeah. Um, yeah, I sort of grouped this question. There's another one from Dylan saying, well, "Who are a few players that will really improve?" The yeah, I, I, the reason I grouped yeah. these is because I want to see the, these guys in JLT because I'm expecting yeah. a big year. Yeah, I've got. I can add to that now. If we've, since we've grouped those together, I had a few guys there. I had Chera. I yep. think getting a consistent midfield crack with a new coach should help him wonders. Yep. Sam Petrovsky seatons another one. Go back to Carlton. I think he's had a few years in the system now. He's sort of been figuring out his role towards the end of last year, starting to really click with it. Yeah. Another good preseason. He can really solidify and emerge, I think. Good nomination. And I think Jack Lukosius, even though Ooh, I like early Lukosius. days, but like he's a talented guy and he's got that potential to have another jump. I think he could do that at like Gold that Coast, one. especially a, as the team improves, improves around him. I'm a big fan of Lukosius. I like yeah. that call. Um, I've got some as well. Uh yeah. From my own club, Tim Kelly, first game yeah. in West Coast Colours. Jared Brand is probably the young one I want to see because yeah. he's a first-round draft pick that's going to be given a new role this year. I think he's going to be playing as a tall wingman. So I'm very excited to see if he can lock that down. Um, and then it will start in the Marsh series. Brad Hill and St Kilda, because yeah. we talked about it before. We think he's just about their best player. Already. Yeah, I'd give him the edge there. So um, it'll be interesting. Seb Ross, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A couple of guys worth mentioning. You're right. Mentioning, You're but, right. Yeah. There, there's a few around that level. Yeah. Um, Can't really declare cut one of them. I don't. Maybe Brad slightly because of his pedigree of Hawthorne. Yeah, and knowing how to win at the highest level. They're both the same age, which is good for St Kilda. Yeah. Both my age, actually, twenty six. <laughs> so, um, not that that is relevant at you all. Old fart. <laughs> uh, another St Kilda boy, Max King. Yeah, that first yeah. game uh, coming this year. He kicked four in an intra club the other day, I believe. You get him in yeah. your dream team, your fantasy team, because yeah. he's one hundred and seventy k and will probably play. Isaac Rankin, exact same thing. Yeah, Rankin was one of my top of my... Because I was watching your fancy video the other day, and it's like, yeah, def- there was a few guys on I'm like, definitely, definitely, definitely. Rankin, yeah. Max King. Yeah. Marlon Pickett was another definitely. Yeah. 170 for Marlon Pickett. That's yeah. ridiculous. Well, we should do a fantasy podcast like we did last yeah. year with Brendan Callum. Yeah, should, bloody Let's oath. do that soon. So, yeah, more to come. Um, Morton to come. Is it? <laughs> Gross. <laughs> but yes, that is his name. Nice. Fuck, uh, my memory's good. <laughs> I'll, I'll rattle off a few others. Um... Adam Tomlinson, big new recruit from Melbourne. Yeah. Was one that we probably haven't heard Ed Langdon, actually. Yeah. I'll, I'll go with the Ed Langdon. True. <laughs> actually, now that you bring that up. But Tomlinson's one, actually, that kind of, at least in my perception, has been swept under the rug a little bit in terms of big signings. Like, that's yeah. actually quite a good recruit yeah. um, for Melbourne there. It's like a tall, 
utility wingman yeah. two back kind of player. I think sounds he, like they came to get him on the wing. Yeah. Well, they've got some outside run with Langdon yeah. and that now. So, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm keen to see how he works. Okay. And then a couple of Gold Coast boys, Brandon Ellis and Hugh Greenwood, to yeah. see what they can bring to Gold Coast because they've obviously lacked mature players over the years. Um, I'm keen to see how they go. Yeah. Definitely. I've actually got more. <laughs> yeah, go. A few players that will really improve. Blake Hakers. Yep. I think he's going to be given a lock, uh, like a locked into a... Inside mid roll yeah, this that's year. That's what it's sounding like. That's what um, I think he said that yeah. that Longmuir sees him as an inside mid, and that's where I've long felt he should be playing. And I'm, he's one of my favourites for a long yeah. time. I don't know why. Just sometimes you just pick. He was your man players. crush of that draft, I remember. Three drafts, and I've just kind yeah. of loosely followed him. But I also think he's played well when he's had a clear run at it. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I like him as a talent. Yep. Yeah. I was glad to get him through the door, Shy even at the expense of Brad. Yeah, that's true. Shy Bolton, Richmond. Yeah. Uh, future gun half forward. Well, he's a pretty yeah. good player already, but he'll get better. Yeah. Luke Davies Uniac. LDU. LDU. Finally ready to take the next step. I've got I've got your boy Brayshell down. Yeah. And then a few others like Charlie Ballard, Gold Coast. Yep. Um he's a uh, good good sort of prospect and God they need him up at the Gold Coast. Hunter Clark from St Kilda. I've got a few Saints players yeah. names here. And Sam Pal Pepper. Another Ooh. one of my preview draft favourites right. that's been maligned. Yeah, I think this is the year for him where he either Gets well back on track and shows what he can do in Port Adelaide, or they probably start looking at moving him. Yeah, I'd probably at a guess. I agree. I think there was talk he was going to move yeah. at the end of last year, and it didn't eventuate. And well, he's contracted, yeah. obviously. So yeah, yeah. interesting. This could be it's a make or break. Exactly right. Hopefully, that maybe a WA club gets a cheap offer in. Yeah, I'm him. optimistic. Yeah, maybe we'll see. Um. Which youngsters are you most keen to see in 2020? Asks Larry the Lobster. So I particular I chose first year players, but um, yeah, I've you, gone firsties first as well. Year, or, yeah, thirsty firsties. Thirsty firsties. <laughs> yeah, I've gone your type? the cliche row, mm-hmm. obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. I've gone Hayden Young. I just obvi- like that's a bit of Fredo bias there, but even going before we took him, I knew he was a beautiful kick player. I really like to see how he operates. That kicking is going to be beautiful to watch. But I think I've said this a few times, but that kick he pulled off against WA in the mm. 18 finals is the best kick I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, true. And Lockie Ash as well. Yeah. Similar he, man crush draft. He's pre-draft. sick. Yeah. He's sick, but he's the sort of player who we would get a game early in a good team, but... GWS is a hard GWS, team to crack. Yeah, uh, that's why I didn't have him in my fantasy team. Is he going to uh, play? That is a tough question. Because he's like worth 260k. Again, yep. we're creeping into fantasy talk, but... Again, yeah. I, I would love to see him play early, but I don't know if he will. Yeah, it's tough. That team's stacked. Mm. So Yeah, look at the All-Stars thing. They've got the most players out of any team. Well, them and Richmond both have five players each, I think. In the All-Star game? Yeah. I thought there was a cap. They've changed three. it. Really? They've changed it because the coaches got together and there was that many players who wanted to play. They oh. like yeah made it only one player per team. I <laughs> legit did yeah. not know that. I legit yeah. did not know that. Wow. That was a big thing. They changed it yeah. a few days before. Interesting. And yeah, it makes sense that the WA teams only sent two each because yeah. of flight. The flight, yeah, yeah. rather. I mean, I guess Sydney to Melbourne's yeah. not that far, but for Perth it was. So. Yeah. And it's a nice nod for Shepard, I'd say. True, yeah. Uh, I think that was a deserved nice little nod for him. Yeah, I agree. He probably wouldn't have made it if you had to pick three players from the Eagles, but... Yeah. Yeah, no, well said. But picking on position and like... Yeah, yep. He is what he was deserving of being a starting back in that All Stars team. Mm. Yeah, Johannesson was one that got picked. That I was like, mm, a bit lucky. He's one a lot of people seem to like him. But he's like, yeah, I think he's uh, fallen off a little bit since uh, he won the Norm Smith. Yeah, but mind you, you could say that about the Bulldogs generally up yeah. until like the second half of last year. Yeah, pretty much. He's definitely a downhill scare. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Hayden Young, uh, Lockie Ash, Dylan Stevens, my pick yeah. for the Rising Star. Ooh. I Sneaky. like him because I think yeah. Sydney's going to give him games, yeah. and he's an outside, fast, skillful wingman, which is where you can show off early. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, I, I really like him, and yeah. I'm keen to see him. Cooper Stevens is another player that I've got down from Geelong. He'll be interesting in yeah. terms of uh, whether he gets a game early. So uh, you've got Tim Kelly, obviously leave the club. Jack Stephen, his replacement's injured, I believe. So Constable and uh, Cooper Stevens will probably and be And Cockatoo's injured as well, so he's not even in an opportunity true. to compete. That's true. That's right. Yeah. He's out for again. round one at least, I think. Out again. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, but the, the only reason... I know Constable's had a couple of years on Stevens, but they did invest... A, a, First round pick. A high draft yeah. pick for Geelong. Um, so he, uh, he, uh, he'll certainly play 
huh. March, you'd think, um, if he's fit. Yeah, he, definitely. He's pretty March. physically developed, Coop Stevens. He's actually mm. got a real rig on him, um, which is how I judge AFL players. <laughs> uh, Jeremy Sharp was one of the, another favourite pre-draft. Will Day, he huh. bolted into the top 12 on draft night huh. for Hawthorne. Um, he was a, he's a bit more prospective, though, a talent rather than... True. Uh, he might crack a game this year. Um Mitch Georgiatis might play round one. Yeah. Another WA bolter. He's a funny one where... Where was uh, it? He ended up again, Port? Yeah, yeah, he went in the first round. Yeah. But he was like sort of generally picked like in the 50s. Uh. And then in the cut the week before the draft, it was like maybe 20s. And then boom, first round. And then everyone's like, oh, he's actually a secret gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the way. There's always a few <laughs> yeah. of them every draft. Yeah. So, um, But he, he seems like a really like exciting forward type. Uh. Sort of like... Between all, I said this. Um, I can't remember where I said it. I think I said it in a, in a video. But Port Adelaide's huh. just stockpiled all these exciting young forwards. <laughs> like you got Rosie, you got Rosie's George probably long term and mid though. I'd, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah maybe. Uh, Bergman, oh. uh, Dylan Taylor, another forward, and there's probably someone else I'm forgetting. Uh. But yeah, um, that's at least four exciting forwards they've, they've recruited. So it's a new look forward line. Dylan, uh, yeah, Dylan wants to know who are some players that might drop off. Did you have anyone for this? It's nothing too specific. Maybe Gary Ablett's probably mm. getting close to that point where he's not going to be able to give you that twenty and two. Maybe he might give you like a fifteen and one. Yeah, that sounds naughty. But yeah. yeah, something um, like that. I agree. This is a hard question to answer yeah, because I struggled. You can't. You can only really objectively look at players who are old. Yeah. Right. So like, that's literally all I had written was older. If someone's going to have a, say. if anyone's going to have a down year with injury or something like that, we can't predict that. So I did the same thing. I went straight to all the oldest players in the yeah. league, and you look at Geelong, and there's a few on there like uh, Selwood and Ablett. Yeah. Um, you got Hearn and Pendlebury, but again, those guys seem like they're kind of evergreen. Yeah. Like I don't feel like Hearn and Penderby rely too much on athleticism, and they're just. In fact, Hearn's getting better, yeah. <laughs> and Penderby's not slowing down at all. He made All Australian. Uh, David Mundy might be copped a broken yeah. leg this year, and what was he, thirty-four? Yeah. Again, he played fantastic. And well he'd be year. playing a smaller role maybe now that they're trying to give the bigger roles to the kids. Yeah, that's true. Just like at the bakery. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> fatten them up. A terrible joke. It was. Heath Shaw, he must be. He's pretty old now. Yeah. Bets. But, I mean, Betts was kind of down last year. Yeah. Burgoyne, is he the, he's the oldest, isn't he? Yeah. I reckon this might be the year that Dustin, Dustin Fletcher retires. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Whoa. No. Did Burgoyne sign for one year? He did. Yeah, it was one year like at Hawthorne or two years at Gold Coast, and he went one year at Hawthorne. That's right. Uh, Cade Simpson, pretty damn old. But he always Again, surprises you. Yeah. Uh, Travis Boat just come off probably yeah. his career best season. Josh Kennedy. Uh, hmm. Josh Kennedy, Sydney. I actually think Josh Kennedy... West Coast will have a good year because this is his first yeah. preseason in three years, and same with Buddy Franklin. Um, not yeah. not the three years part, but they're both looking the fittest they've looked in three years. I reckon both of them will come good this year. Uh, so to answer the question, I don't really know who's going to slow down. Gary Ablett's probably the most obvious yeah. answer. I agree with that one. I'd written. I probably can't say that one. Uh, older Kurtz. <laughs> <laughs> who's Kurt? Kurt Angle. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Now, <laughs> the next question is based on champion data, and Oof. it's coming from Bruce, friend Brucey. of the channel. He says, what are your thoughts on the champion data ranking? Specifically, he nominates a few. So, GWS and West Coast were ranked 12th and 13th for midfield, <laughs> and you like I feel like a lot of people would probably say top four yeah. midfields, both of them. Fremantle, bottom four defence. We've both talked about mm. how we actually rate Fremantle's defence. It's probably the best thing they have going for them, in my yeah. opinion. That's the best line on the ground. Yeah. Uh, what was it? The Dogs rank second overall behind Richmond. Uh, and they rank worst for their... Mid well, sorry, their worst line is their midfield. <laughs> which is weird because... Well, I didn't, uh, it's just my opinion, but I always thought the Bulldogs' strength was their midfield. Uh, um, what do you think of champion data generally? Most of the shit they come out with, I'm like, where do they come up with this? Like, It's stupid not giving people access to the statistics, like letting this one company hoard the statistics and then come up with bullshit parameters based on their algorithms that yeah that calculate is. god knows what there is no transparency at all yeah. so we can't really assess it we can only look at the results but and I think with the eye test their results are usually shit well yeah that's the thing i don't think that many people take champion data seriously we will take it seriously if that suits our argument hmm. so this guy is actually elite and he plays <laughs> for my club but that's about it 
But I did actually have a quick look at last year's rankings and there were actually, it was actually some interesting results, right? So yeah. list rankings, it had Melbourne and Adelaide top two. Yeah. And Melbourne finished bottom two. <laughs> Essendon fourth, West Coast 11th, and the Bulldogs bottom four. So those were all yeah. terrible results. Yeah, that's the thing. That's that inconsistent. You don't know what's basing their like... Mm how they're processing the data that they have to come to their conclusions, mm. it's probably as reliable as a lot of methods we have available. Yeah, I mean, football is such a hard game to break down yeah. objectively, and they're probably the best we've got. They're the they're only thing we've got because the yeah. bloody AFL have let them hoard all the statistics of the whole league. True. That's the thing that I love about the NBA. Every statistics public, so guys can just come up with all sorts of like player ratings, mm. different algorithms and equations to calculate stuff. That's true. Yeah. Uh, but we'll move on. I guess we can conclude to say that we don't really take champion data too seriously mm. for all the reasons I'll, that's illustrated. Yeah, I'll take the information. Like Any information mm. can provide context, but yes, yeah, what you take from that information and how you evaluate yeah. it's a different thing. Well, they're giving us an unexplained outcome. Yeah. The result of something we can't see. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy to be sceptical. Exactly. How will Gold Coast youngsters go in 2020? Will they show potential signs that they can give Gold Coast fans hope for the future? Asks Larry the Lobster. How do you feel about Gold Coast I'd youth? I'd definitely say they're on the way. They're going to get better, but still need more, probably they're probably two years away from really pushing for finals, I think. Is this different to how they were, say, two or three years ago? Yeah, they've this foundation is a lot better than the last one, I feel. I agree. I think this is their strongest youth crop they've had since they've started. Yeah. Like... Like since the first group, yeah. Do you know what I mean, like a, the first. But even group with the first tracks. group, that found, like the talent foundation was good, but every other aspect of that foundation was terrible. Yes, that's true. Like the whole club now seems to be rock solid, going in the right direction, good plan. Hmm. Yeah, and they're like, sticking with it and executing it. Yeah, I like they're certainly better off the field than ever. Well, not financially, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like the facilities and stuff like that. They're not indemountables. No, that's right. That does but, help. But specifically in terms of the youngsters, yeah, I think this is a really talented group they've got. So in the last two years, they got Lacocious, King, Rankin. and Rankin, and then Raul and Anderson added to that. Yeah. And then you that's before you even go to the other first That's round. just there's top like, 10 picks. Yeah, and then there's like Sam Flanders. They've just added yeah. pick 11. Jeremy Sharp, pick 27. Yeah. Um, Jez McLennan, pick 24 last year. Yeah. Um, these are all still pretty high draft picks. So, mm. yeah, no, I think they're in a good spot in terms of their list. They're probably where Carlton were maybe 12 months ago. Yeah. That's what I said. I made a video about Carlton 12 months ago saying that they've probably finally got the kids in and now it's time to develop them. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, before they got the coach in the rank and then they were crap and you couldn't really see who was going to take the club yeah. up and now you can finally see that, I think, at Gold Coast. Yeah. So, and Whether, even guys like Fiorini and Tuke Miller and stuff are still not yeah. ancient. They'll, no, they're not. They're yeah. born in 96. Yeah. So that was 20, 24 this year. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's very young. Yeah. And they're leading the midfield as well, which makes it yeah. tough. So, yeah, it really goes to show they probably really do need some more experienced leaders yeah. around. Like someone. Brandon t- Ellis is a bit of that. He's. Yeah. Hugh Greenwood, even. He's. Ideal world. Been around Adelaide when they were good. Ideal world, though, you want them to be one of your best players as one of the experienced yeah. guys. But, yeah. Brandon Ellis would be one of their best players. Yeah, maybe. Not for that saying too much at this stage of the no. game, but... No, nah, I was just thinking, like, someone, like, in the midfield mm. who can guide that young midfield, like a Fife type. N- not necessarily as good as Fife, yeah. but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, next question is... Uh, was there another... Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Will Kim... Kim Telly... <laughs> Kim Telly. Will Tim Kelly live up to the hype... We've seen clubs like Geelong and Collingwood trade in stars like Ablett and Beams to already stacked midfields, and they haven't lived up to expectations. This is a question from Brickwall. Yep. So, what are your thoughts on Tim Kelly living up to expectations? I, from what I've heard, you you obviously would have heard more than I have about the Eagles here, but I've heard that they're iron sheet in that forward mid. Mm. For me, that is stupid. Every mm. time they've ever tried that with sheet, it's never worked. He's regressed. They end up either flicking him out of the team or everyone ends up shitting on him. Kelly's much more suited for that role than Dom Shade. Like, Kelly's a great midfielder. You definitely want to give him those midfield minutes, don't get me wrong. But when you're resting someone, you want him as the resting forward. Yep. Because he's got that dynamic goal now, so he can crumb probably better than... Crumb packs better than Dom Shade does. Shade's more of a pure inside mid player. So if they figure out how they get the players that they've got optimised, it probably could work better than those examples. 
And to be fair with those other two examples, Bams is a head case and Abler is old. Savage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a really good answer. I agree with everything yeah. you say. She will probably get moved forward. And like you say, it hasn't worked in the past. That doesn't mean it won't work again. And I think he's been working on his forward craft a lot. We know he loves a goal bound, a goal from the boundary. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he's been doing uh, positive stuff like that in intra-clubs. And I know that's not really worth much at the moment because it's just intra-clubs. But I'm willing to experiment and then tinker with it. But I, like you say, my first instinct is Sheed as a forward a little bit iffy but yeah. he's, he's another player that's only young and sort of adding mm. strings to his bow but Kelly resting forward would be good but again you also want one of your best midfielders spending maximum time in the guts yeah. but I think you could have Kelly in the guts Gaff pushed out because Gaff's been playing inside yeah. for like or well, inside out and like, Gaff pe- when people talk pure wings people often put Gaff as the best in the league yeah and he can return to more of that pure outside role yeah. because like in the last couple of years he's played more inside but I think he could play a more pure wing role because Maston's gone yeah. And then, um, and then she comes into that inside-out role that Gaff was doing, and Kelly, yeah. you know, I think I think it can work. And then that's why the Eagles need to find another wingman and someone like Brander. But, yeah. um, but to also answer the question, will he live up to the expectations? My expectations are purely that he's going to come in and be an important part of the 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 midfield mix, but not necessarily be the best player. That, yeah, my thing, like, so I'd say if you. If people thinking he's going to perform like he did at Geelong, thinking, <laughs> thinking, yeah, you know what I mean. But like people thinking he's going to perform like he did at Geelong, that's probably not going to happen at West Coast. I agree. If he'd chosen Freo, he probably would have been able to exceed those numbers, for example, like because that's a team that could have mm. given him that undisputed role. Whereas the Eagles have a lot of great guys already, True. where everyone's got to learn to work in cohesion to optimize everyone's talents. Whereas yeah. Freo doesn't have enough established talents, where he just gets where Kelly'd be like a foundational piece rather than. Yes, a complimentary sort of thing. I agree with you, and I think yeah. I think the Eagles' midfield is 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 really about sharing the load. I yeah. think Simpson's really big on that, and I I think Kelly will be about as good as a Yo or Shea, yeah. which is still really he'll be good on par with it. Like he won't be like a transcendent top five Brownlow medalist. That's right, vote getter like he has been. Like you said, if he went to Freo, I could see him absolutely tearing it up. Yeah, and I still expect him to play a really important role. For yeah, us, he obviously he's not. I'm not saying he's going to be like he'll still average his 20, 20 yeah. 4, 25. He'll still be fucking good, but yeah. yeah. No, I think we're on the same page. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Okay. So, sorry, yeah. we just had an audio glitch. We'll just keep rolling through that. Yeah. Um, it's teased us a couple of times. We're getting a little worried. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Oh God, where, where were we? <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, no, I think Tim Kelly will... I think the answer is to lower the expectations is probably the mm. best thing for an Eagles fan. Because uh-huh. this is an Eagles fan that asked the question, I believe. So, yeah. Um, next question. We all know how good Sam Walsh was in 2019. Will Matt Rowe be better than Walsh in his first year? Asks Larry the Lobster again. I've kind of just put here par for the course. I think Rowe probably can probably put up pretty similar numbers to Walsh. Mm-hmm. I'd play a similar role. Like up there, I think mm. pretty comparable, maybe in that mid-high 20s touches range. They're relatively bo- efficient. They're both going to uh, start in a midfield where they're not getting a whole heap of support. Yeah. So obviously you had Cripps at Carlton. But yeah, that's, that's about it. That, that does ha- that does tool. make it easier for Walsh compared to Raul having a guy like Cripps there to take that heavy lifting, whereas Raul's probably... But Walsh did still take a lot of the heavy yeah. lifting himself, which is, yeah, yeah, quite unprecedented. But, I mean, he had 25 right. possessions a game, 10 of them were contested, and 92 fantasy points in his first yeah, season. Yeah, Walsh was ridiculous. Yeah. I, I don't think Raul's going to match that. It's personally. tough. It's going to be tough to do. Yeah. What do you think of Sam Walsh being added to Carlton's leadership team, leadership squad? What do you call it? A kid that can yeah. perform like he did the first year. He's obviously got the intangibles, like off-field mm. stuff. Like, might as well get him in there and give him the opportunity to... Especially because the average age of the group, he's right in that frame. It's probably one of those things that's potentially detrimental short-term for him. I just, I it, might, it could, yeah. In an in yeah. ideal world, you don't want to be learning on the job and leading others. Yeah. Uh-huh. In my opinion, um, but he's shown, but he's not this like he's shown he's already capable. Like, mm. eh. yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a tough one. Does that sh- maybe I'm being cynical here? Does that show Carlton really lack leaders? Yeah, but at the same time, he's Probably. he's a future cap. Like, yeah, Sam Walsh is the sort of kid you look at and go, he'll be a captain of a club someday. Yeah, he's got like those like True. intangibles to him, like a bit of an Andy Brayshaw type where you see like the like even if they're on like. Walsh is a shitload better than Brayshaw on field at this stage of the game, probably. But like you sort of see those intangible qualities that you want that guy at the head of your club sort of thing. I, Walsh I, has that 
kind of personality, I think. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. It could be a plus or minus in terms of development. Like, it could just put yeah. a lot of pressure on him. But, you know, like you said, he doesn't really seem like the yeah. guy who struggles with pressure. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I, find, I, I raised my eyebrows when I first saw it. But it's a massive credit to him because yeah. he's sick, sick for his age. Really yeah, that's nice. well, that's sort of what I'm getting at. It's more pro him than anti Carlton, sure. sort of like how quality he is, and yep. yeah, that's how I'd put it. A little segue. I didn't have this as the next question, but while we're on the topic of leadership teams, Michael Stanton mm-hmm. wants to know our thoughts on Brisbane running with a nine-man leadership team. I've written excessive. That's like what's a list? Forty-six players or something? Is yeah. it? Yeah. So nine out of forty-six players. That's like twenty-five. 20%. More than 20%, like 10 out of 50 is 9 out of 46 would be more than 20. 9 out of 46 is a fifth. 45? Yeah. So it's a bit more, like that extra one adds... A bit less. Fucking whatever. (laughs) (laughs) I understand your point. I I know what you're saying. I'll name them. Zorko, Andrews, Gardner, Martin, Neil, Lester, Berry, Lyons and McCluggage. I I didn't realise that Darcy Gardner and Lester were... Like it held yeah. in such high regard. Still, they're, they're probably those sort of dudes that are internally like everyone mm. goes, yeah, he's a good guy, always gets yeah. around the boys, yeah. yeah. Not necessarily a star player, but like that. Like Fraser McInnes S- at West Coast. Yeah, the same spiritual thing. leader is I, the term sometimes used. I agree with you that nine man leadership team is excessive. However, I do see the logic in it because there has been times, um, and I can think of West Coast examples, where there's been a divide in terms of demographics of a team. So. Yeah of gap between the older veterans and the youth. So Brisbane obviously recruited heaps of youth. And sometimes what they do is mix the leadership group. So you've got mixed demographics in there. So someone like a McCluggage and a Berry are now in the leadership team. And they've also got the older player, oh, Andrews, and the older players like Zorko, who's 31. I didn't realise he was quite Yeah, I didn't realise he was that old either. Um, and Stefan Martin, Lockie Neal's in the middle. So you've you got representation from everyone yeah. there. As a short-term fix, I kind of see the point I remember when the Eagles I, had the same issue with a disparate list. I guess had, none of those guys is a clear-cut captain either, really. Well, Zorko is the, cap, the yeah. captain. Yeah, but like, if he, like in terms of picking a guy to be a captain, like he's good. He's a good player, but his personality, I think, he can be a bit abrasive. Yeah, he does seem like a flog. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we're trying to say. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was just going to say the Eagles, I remember, did it back in the 90s. I think when they first appointed Cousins, who was like a kid, yeah. uh, they kept on camp as a co-captain. And I think it was just to bridge the gap between the two generations yeah. as such. So I think it's a short-term fix, maybe. I can yeah. see the point of it. But I agree, in general, you yeah. don't need that many leaders. Mm. At least not formally recognised. Yeah, Everyone exactly. should be sh- It's the same in the workplace. Everyone should be showing a degree of leadership. Yeah. But, yeah. So the next question is from Michael Stanton. It's a Hawthorne question that we alluded to earlier. Um, is this audio being weird? No, it's okay. I'm just going crazy. So I'm, I'm like hypersensitive to it now. Yeah. We had audio issues earlier and I'm, now yeah, I'm yeah. like, my voice weird. Um, thoughts on Ben McAvoy playing in defense and what are our thoughts on Jonathan Segler's ruck work? So basically, obviously Segler, uh, sorry, McAvoy started playing key back later in the year last yeah. year and performed really well. Um, but is, is it a case of robbing Peter to pay Paul? Uh, I, it's one of those things as well. Like, I sort of think a bit slow maybe is a key back. But then again, I do always... I have said this a few times. Like, I prefer Maxi Gorn as a resting back than like a resting forward. Mm. And McAvoy probably plays that similar style to what Gorn does when he's resting down back. And that quite, can be helpful like as a big pillar Yeah. in that back line. I agree with you. But his pace in terms of like a quick athletic key forward taking him on the lead he's going to get burnt yes you summarise my thoughts as well the, the pace would be the issue the way it could work is if he's thrown back in periods where Hawthorne are setting up behind the ball and there's periods of dominance from the other team just surging yeah. inside because he's a good intercept sort of marker um, and obviously your pace is not going to yeah. be exposed when there's long bombs and stuff yeah, yeah. like that in that context he's great exactly yeah. do Hawthorne need a key back so they've just recruited they kind of do. They did just recruit Sam Frost, though. Yeah. They delisted Caden Brand. They obviously don't rate him because he, yeah. he's, he's been picked up by Sydney. But they obviously don't rate him enough to keep, keep him, him on when they kind of needed a key back. Yeah. Um, and they also got rid of Pitney, who's their ruck. He's gone to Carlton. Yeah. So Didn't they bring someone back in, though? In terms of Ruckman? Maybe. Um, might be thinking crazy. So Brand maybe. went out. Frost came in. Yeah. Patton came in at Ford. Yeah. But no, I don't think they recruited a ruck. Essendon? Phillips. Yeah. What was that? 
Essendon recruited Phillips. Oh, yeah, I thought, for some reason yeah. I thought Hawthorne got him. Nah, nah. Yeah. I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I suspect, if there's is, is there periods where Frost probably can't take like the gorilla forwards that maybe... Uh, like the Charlie said, Dixons Ma- of the world? Yeah, like McAvoy could go back and rest on him. Uh, uh, they do still have Frawley, and they have a pretty good intercepting back line. Sicily. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's a bit shorter, but yeah, yeah. he's a good interceptor, obviously. Third tall. Um, but the, the other plus they've got now is some flexibility. So, obviously, you've got Mitch Lewis up forward. He's 198 mm. centimetres. Jonathan Patton joins the forward line. These guys could potentially take some relief ruck if you've got McAvoy down back. Yeah. They could take the forward line. But if you've got there. McAvoy down back, you'd use him as your second ruck. That's right. Yeah, okay. but if the ball's yeah. planted in the forward line. Yeah, I guess if you're sticking someone down there to cover for him, it's a bit harder. But yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't really do too much second rucking if. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. you can't do too much second ruck, second rucking if you're planted in the back line. Yeah. That's what that's what I'm getting at. Um, they've also given Segler a three year deal, so there's obviously faith. He's hmm. quite a good tap ruckman, I think. Yeah. He doesn't really play, as far as I can tell. Maybe I'm not as familiar with him, but I don't know if he's he's as good as a as a um, as a second position. Uh, so like he's pretty much a pure ruck. Yeah. The Eagles roll with Nat Nuing Hickey at the moment. Yeah. Mind you, only for four games, so not of a great sample size. So, but teams are doing it. Yeah. Um. I would suggest he should be a bit part. I think he should float back. Uh, this is uh, McAvoy I'm talking about. Yeah. And Segler can take a fair bit of the ruck. Yeah. Duties. But I would hate to. I'd hate to see McAvoy out of the ruck completely. Yeah. I think. Because he's uh, depends he's, how Segler would go floating down back when McAvoy's rucking, because you'd have to have someone take that back spot. Maybe while McAvoy's rucking. Maybe so they've got Frawley and Frost down there. I, I guess those two would probably for patches of games you'd be fine with those just those two. Yeah, Frost, and Cecily can do a job on someone taller if he has to for a bit. You wouldn't yeah. do it for the full four quarters, but that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's Give it. you a different look. Another Hawthorne question is from Dominic. Yeah, I was guessing you'd bundle these two together, even yeah. though they weren't at the time. How well will Tom Mitchell return? And how will guys like John Patton and Phil McGuinness go? So firstly, Tom Mitchell. I think he will be solid, but he won't be as good as he was that Brownlow season before he got injured because that season he was carrying that mm. midfield. Now he's got that support in guys like... That's true. Omir, Warpool, exactly. Yeah. He's yeah. got that support now, so he won't have to get his monster posies every game. Mm. Monster posies. Yeah. That's true. Uh, I guess I would sort of probably temper expectations. He doesn't seem like the guy that would... I can't imagine him struggling. No. But I think it was a really bad injury. It's probably some psychological issues. I think he actually opened up a little bit about it recently, about having some, like, issues just going quite as hard as he once did. Yeah. (laughs) They they, will take, like, broken legs. Penis wise I'll I'll go to my favourite NBA comparisons here. A couple of players like Gordon Hayward and Paul Pierce, they both a couple of guys would have had bad broken legs, like they've landed awkwardly on the court. Yeah. Snapped. It's like horrendous. <sighs> yeah, basketball break. injuries are gross, hey. Yeah, these ones are horrendous. But anyway, yeah, like their first years coming back off the injuries, they weren't quite the same. Then the second year though, they had that confidence in mm. their game. They were yeah. So I think it'll give Mitchell this season the sort of like even Fife, he was the same when he came back off his broken yeah. legs. His first season back he wasn't mm. full Fife and then True. Yeah. He had a bruised sternum at one point, I think, didn't he? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of Patton, I think he'll be yeah. good for him. Yeah. And McGinnis, he'll show flashes, but he'll be in and out of the team a bit, I think, from yeah. what I know about him. I would say McGinnis probably would set a goal as debuting this year. Yeah. I don't think he's necessarily... A him and Day are sort of like probably got a little bit of development, even if it's yeah. just six months. But Yeah, yeah they're not walk-ups. Yeah. Yeah, and Hawthorne probably a little bit healthier than in the midfield. Well, yeah. Obviously, Tom Mitchell's fit now. The healthiest so. they've been in probably a couple of years. Yeah, as far as I can see. So, yeah. Um, Patton's a tough one. I don't necessarily... I don't, I'm You're not, not as high on him as I am, are no, you? Yeah. No, no. Um, he's done... How many ACLs has he done? A few. It's at least two. Is it three? Something. I don't know the exact number, but I know he's had a lot of leg injuries over the years. He's yeah. probably been injured more than he's played. Yeah. He's never really played to a really high standard. And he's getting to that yeah. age where it's like, if you're not showing it now, when are you going to show it? He hasn't had the chance with the injuries, but yeah, I it's know. tough to say. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'm just being a prick. It's tough. Like, Yeah, I definitely can see him not being that good, but... Mm. I just think Clarkson's a bloody wizard and he'll get the most yeah, out of it. Well, that is a strong argument. Yeah. Even Scully's another factor to their midfield that's yes, had a full yeah. season because he came into that preseason if he with that 
will he ever play again ankle thing ended eight, up playing like 21 ended, games or something yeah. yeah but now he's had a full pro season and everything yeah it's typical Hawthorne yeah <laughs> that's another person Just in that midfield it, <laughs> making it work yeah that's true he'll make and even Tom Mitchell he'll, he'll love having that Tom Scully connection there because he's clearance based flick it out to someone like Scully or whatever mm, very true. nice yeah <laughs> To, to clarify my pattern thoughts, I yeah. think he will go well, sort of, like, I think he'll be a good role player. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be a beast dominant key forward or anything like that, yeah. at least at least not this year. I'm yeah, he's not a common medalist. No, I don't think I don't think yeah. I see that. I mean, he's still, like, 25. He's a year older than me. Yeah, so yeah. 25, 26, 20, 26. 26, yeah. Yeah. Um, and he's going to need time to gel with Lewis as a one-two punch up yeah. there. But as in terms of the structure... And they still Hawthorne, got Gunston and Bruised. Yes. And um, Wingard. And yeah. That. That's actually got a pretty damn good forward line. I was looking mm. at their best twenty-two today. It was yeah, it's actually more yeah. settled than I realised. But um, and I've been talking them up to play finals like yeah. all summer. But um, I think he'll be a good role player. Won't dominate. Yeah. Not this year. Yeah, it's a fair yeah. assessment. Yeah. Um, we're pretty much into the last few questions. Um, yep. What's who's your tip on taking out the true footy tipping comp? Yes, I forgot to mention this, this is from okay. Toby, who did really well in the tipping competition yeah. last year. I remember. Um, and I'll be doing that again where I announce who wins each round in the tipping videos. Yeah, that was a nice touch, I thought. Yes, I'm going to put the link in the description, guys, so sign up. I think I, I think I sent an automatic invitation to everyone who was in it last year, huh? but I'll put the link in the description in case you're new to the channel and, and didn't sign up last year because we'd love to have you. I think we only got like 20 people to do the tips. It's like 26 or something last yeah. year, I think. And we had like 130 in fantasy, so it'd be good to, to go was, in both. We had 26 ways. people, and from like 22 to 26 was all... Me, Louis, Josie, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where did I finish? I think I finished in the fur in yeah. the top like six, seven, eight. I could be making that up. I might, maybe it was lower, but yeah. I don't know. Um, but in terms of winning, I didn't follow too many of the big contenders from last year, so it's a bit hard to think. I've, I've, we did get the option for a smoky though, and I've got an interesting one. I'm yeah. going to say your missus beats you and wins the cup. She does. Well, did she beat me last year? I think she did. Yeah. I don't know. You'd know better than me. She's actually really good at tipping. Yeah. Yeah. Fellow law dog. She's got the brains to do. She's got the brains to pull it off. She's a fellow law dog. <laughs> yes. Legal law degrees really prepare you for footy tipping. Ex- exactly, mate. It helps you justify when your picks are shit at least. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> HK Pig wants to know who will win the most flags and spoons this decade. I've got for flags. I've got the doggies. I reckon. Really, for the deck for the twenties. Yeah, I think because they could get a few early and still be have enough on to get maybe one or two later down the track when yeah. their guys are on their older legs with a second round of people. That's a tricky thing because Richmond's like the the dominant team right now. Yeah. It's like they're the heir apparent to Hawthorne, at least it seems. Yeah. But they're probably going to run out of steam by the end of the twenties. Yeah, so yeah, I'm thinking early mid twenties they run out of steam. Yeah, my answer was ironic. I put most GWS, hmm? most spoons, Gold Coast. <laughs> my, I couldn't. I couldn't pick a most spoons. I picked a state because I couldn't pick a team. I picked Victoria. South Australia. <laughs> South Australia. Really for spoons? Yeah, I reckon oh. Adelaide or Port. One of those two teams is going to be shit in the 2020s. Wow. And that is based on nothing. But I can't. Well, really lists are, I can't see their lists going anywhere. Really, going really? In, like we're well, not going anywhere necessarily, but not getting free, like. And I can't. I, I see. You know, I can see them having some shit years. One like, of those two teams. I feel like Port have really prepared for their next rebuild a lot better than Adelaide have. Yeah. Like Adelaide have got invested yeah. in high draft picks, but they and I'm um, mm. this is dangerous to judge kids yeah. just on like just when they've been drafted. But nothing really screams out as really exciting for exactly. me yet compared to Port. And I feel like Port um, are going to have an easier transition there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Adelaide have traded back as well. Like they, they traded up for those picks and then traded into futures as well. Yeah. And just delayed that. Yeah, I think Adelaide's made a meal of it. <laughs> I think yeah. they're probably going to look bleed more talent. Those guys will crack the shits and one out, I think. I, w- I won't go as far as to say as they've made a meal of it, but I think there's. I feel like Port are definitely... Port's pro- better set up out of the two. Yeah. But it's like... Yeah, it's, too many variables for me to, to pick between them so I mm. sort of just pick the state figure I piss off the whole South Australia instead of just half of them <laughs> I'm going to say Victoria because it's 10 teams <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good <laughs> um, Yarkin or Jarkin I actually don't know how you say his name I think it's Yarkin I'm going to guess I guess I'll get I'll be the one to find out based on this question he says what dress would should he wear on my date with Busher I, I've got here flimsier the better but <laughs> ultimately whatever cu- whatever <laughs> makes your eyes pop I think. Whatever gets those eyes pop and nice colour, just make those eyes pop. Thank you, Yarkin. Eight years old from New South Wales. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, finally, we've got, a, we've got an interesting question from Harry. Huh? Do you see the Stars winning another BBL final? Did you watch much BBL? I've tuned out. Like, I used to be really on top of the Big Bash, really sharp. But the past couple of seasons, I've barely had a clue. I, like... You in terms what? of talent, they've got the talent to win more. They've got Stoinis, Maxwell, yeah. assuming guys don't get called up to Australia. Maxwell, that ship seems to have somewhat sailed. The, like he's in and out, he's there. You know what's hilarious? I like half, I like four times advertised that we're going to do BBL live streams and then literally didn't even do one. And then one day the BBL final was on, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I was completely forgot. Yeah, it's flown by. Like the past couple of seasons of Big Bash have just like mm. gone right over my head. Like, Usually I'd probably watch, I'd sit down and watch every game every afternoon. I was right on top of it. I was betting, making good money, betting on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. Which is why we We're need not a good betting money. sponsor for the yeah. 2020 season. Yeah, bet get ball. on us, bet easy, sports bet, lad brokes, whoever. Bet ball. Yeah, whoever will have us. Uh, bet ball sponsors True Geordies. Um, the kickoff. They must nice. make so much money. Yeah. But yeah, we have a while bet to go six, yet. Five. Oh, I didn't actually answer the question. Um, yeah, the stars are stacked. They yeah. should have won more than they have. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think that wraps up True Footy Podcast 46. That was a good one. I enjoyed this. It was a good one for sure. We should do a couple soon. I want to do a predictions one where we yeah. just talk about the season. And then I want to do a fantasy one with the boys. Yeah. So I'll buy a buddy, one of those things like the buddy genies wear, like the prediction hat thing. I'll wear that for the prediction podcast. <laughs> I don't know what you're referring to. Like the, one of those like turban looking things that like people that predict the future wear, like one of those things. That sounds yeah. really racist. It probably um, could be. Uh, I don't know. Probably not. Like it it's, it's not race. I don't. It's not racist. It's, not it's like racist. I'm just being it's idiot. like that. Yeah. 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 I'll Google it anyway. While you, wrap you just up. offended all of our Vietnamese viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, like I said, the next podcast was going to be next week with young Alistair Cookson. <laughs> <laughs> Just call him that the whole podcast. Yeah, cheers, guys. We'll see you next time. Catch up.